everyone. Welcome to the BAW show. We are recording on Wednesday morning um, because we are both unavailable tonight to do the show, but I am joined just with Kira this week. Kira, how are you? How did you pull up from the best and fairest on Sunday night? Good. I pulled up very well. I was tucked in bed nice and early, so not a big one for myself, but it was a really lovely night and even better Friday night. Oh, Friday night was fantastic. Um, we'll get into um, where we both were Friday night because unfortunately we both weren't at the game, but um, you got a bit of a funny little story time uh, to come a bit later. But uh, firstly, yeah. just wanted to thank uh, Terry and the Blue Abroad Network for allowing us to have this platform, um, our show sponsor, the Carlton Cheer Squad, who I will be with tonight doing the banner for the big game against Collingwood this Sunday. Um, mad shout out to all of them. They are fantastic and they were super loud on Friday night. Absolutely super loud. I've got a bit of a story to add to that, but um, let's just crack straight in. Let's do it. I'm so glad people can't see us when that's on. We <laughs> just had a full dance battle. <laughs> it's like a full on dance party. It was really good. No, I really love that intro. It gets better every single season that we have. And shout out to Willem who put that one together with Terry um, on their little training day, which we've spoken about before. But um, Kira, Friday night. Yes. yes, Friday night happened. We It did. It wasn't quite the 30 points that I predicted but um, wasn't quite the small margin you guys predicted either, but it was a win nonetheless um, and a pretty comprehensive one, if I'm honest. And? Go for it. I know you want to do it. I individual goal kick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think the veins are going to pop out of my head. Eight individual goal kickers. Incredible. Um, do you want to tell everyone about the um, how you found out we had eight individual goal kickers on Friday night? Yes. Yeah, so I was um, emceeing the Coburg Best and Fairest on Friday night, which meant I couldn't be at the game. But my family all obviously watched the BAW show. We know about BA Nan. So they're following along with the scores and I'm like, guys, you need to keep an eye out. Don't even worry about the score. Eight individual goal kickers is what I need tonight. So we have a break and I go over to my table and, my mum's like, there's six. We're on here. It's going to happen. So I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Awesome. Love that. Get back up on stage. I'm presenting awards and I look up, very serious, and I look up and I just see the entire table going, eight, eight. And I'm like, huh. and the winner is. <laughs> and then as soon as awards were over, I ran to my table, got my phone, had a check that there. They were correct. They weren't stitching me up. And there was indeed eight individual goal kickers, so I was very, very happy. There might be a video floating around champagne in hand and Love eight that. individual goal kickers being screamed. It was great. Well, we could have had nine, but um, Skep, Skep missed one. But, um, no, it was really, really good to see a nice spread of different goal kickers and Daisy Walker kicking her first AFLW goal as well, which is an amazing achievement for her because I'm, I'm, I've seen the video floating around. Um, all the girls have been sharing it. She's um, a little bit over the moon by kicking her first goal, which is really mm -hmm. nice to see. Um, I also was un unable to attend because I had one of my close friend's um, birthday dinners. Um, so we were out there, but I had um, tabs on the score and we were messing in, messaging in our, in our WhatsApp group with Terry and um, I think you spoke in caps at one point going, this is unbelievable. It was, it was really People funny. were coming up to me because every time I wasn't on stage talking, I'd be like off to the side on my phone. People keep coming up to me being like, come dance with us. Like, what are you doing? Guys, there is very important business happening on my phone. <laughs> I need to attend to. When the game's over, I'll be out there. They're like, oh, my gosh, you're obsessed. I'm like, yeah, I am, actually. Just a little bit. And that's not, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit obsessed, trust me. But um, no, final scores were 4-10-34 uh, to the Bulldogs, um, to 8-5-53 the Blues. Um, accurate kicking is probably the first thing that I want to 
tick off the box. Um, incredible that we are actually have the ability to hit the scoreboard. Um, and we held the ball in our forward 50 quite a fair bit in that first quarter. Um, and I'm very, I was watching, I rewatched the game last night just, you know, so it was fresh in my mind for, for today. And really, really impressed with the our ability to set up behind the ball and keep peppering their defensive line. My one criticism is that when we do kick it in there, sometimes we do kick it in there blindly and we don't actually find a target. Um, number of occasions we kept hitting them directly on the chest or our forward started behind or the ball hit the deck, there was no crummers. Um, little little minor things that I reckon can be improved on um, in the last few rounds and then before finals should we make it. Absolutely. And I think that's the really exciting part is by no means are we a finished product. We had eight individual goal kickers, but we're not a finished product at all. And I think we're able to have really successful wins and still look at it and say we've still got quite a bit to improve on to become one of the premier teams in this competition. Um, And obviously we didn't think that would happen overnight, but it's really, really impressive to see really big chunks of our game plan shifting and making us a more successful team. But then there's really minute things which we can fix pretty easily. Like you have a meeting with the forwards and say, this week I don't want to see you behind the defender, get in front. That's a pretty easy thing to switch up and to communicate. It's not a massive game plan change. So I think we'll be okay. And I think you just change that little thing and we're all good. Yeah, I think so too. A bit close to your mic. Um, no, oh, I, I agree. I don't know. It wasn't me. I haven't got a microphone. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that was. I was like, oh, my gosh, am I going to die right now? I'm really sorry if we just broke anyone's ears. I don't know. Yeah, apologies. Um, no, but you're right. And it's not like last year where it was repeat issues week in, week out. It appeared nothing was being fixed. Nothing was changing. It was the same product week in, week out. Mike. We've seen it already this year. Bree Moody went forward, didn't work, moved her back. Credit to Jess Good. She has been probably, she's taken a step up this season for mine. She's holding her contested mark. She's winning the rucks. Her ability to be able to swap with Bree Moody and it be seamless, that transition is, like you said, bang. Love that. And that's what we want. And we're feeding, we're giving our midfielders first use. And that's one thing we didn't do last year. Like we were winning the ruck, but we weren't we weren't hitting it with any purpose. This year, our mids are set up perfectly to receive the ball. That's why we're getting so many forward entries. It's just the efficiency inside 50 that we need to work on. I don't think anyone has any idea how much more fun it's been for Shannon and I this season because we're not saying the same thing every week. Like, don't get us wrong, we loved it last season, but every week we got on here and before we would press record, we're like, so how are we going to say in different words than what we said last week that yeah. there is no game plan and they don't know how to go forward and we can't kick goals? And now yeah. we've got something exciting to talk about. Mind you, improvements as well, but something new to talk about every week, which is very, very exciting. And I think That's it. Yeah, we spoke about it a lot, a lot last week, but it's a credit to all the coaching staff and the leadership because I think we've just seen an absolutely massive – is that bad English? Absolutely massive. Anyway, we've right. seen – a really big shift this season. And I think, you know, it's, of course, Bucky, we spoke about a lot about him last week, but it's all the coaches, it's managers, it's the players on the field just taking accountability for the team, I guess, and what they want to stand for, which is really, really, really happy to see. And just a reminder, eight individual goalkeepers. They're buying into the brand and... That's what we want to see. We want them to be out there enjoying their footy. We want them to want to play. Um, And just the energy that they're bringing off is just incredible. They're bringing off so much positive energy. And it's a testament to Bucky and his coaching team because their ability to change the mindset this fast in a very short off-season that he's been, like, since he was appointed, incredible and i i'm so excited to see where this group can go if it's not this year next year if it's not next year the year after the the expectations this year they've exceeded them we sat here 
before round one and said, whatever will be, will be with this group. We just want to see improvement. Never in my wildest dreams did I think we'd be sitting this close to the top four in round seven with three rounds to go before finals. Like nowhere, nowhere in the script did it say that that was going to happen. No. We're a win off third. We are a win off third. And I'm. We're, we're sitting sixth, in case anyone didn't know. So, with a percentage of 127.1. So, it's not the worst. Sorry, 105. I was reading Gold Coast percentage. 105 yeah. is our percent. It's not the worst in the eight. Um, yes, it is. No, no it's, it's not. Essendon's got 97.4. Yeah. Um, so, it's not the worst, but it's also. Week. Second one, so it's not amazing. We, <laughs> but we're in the eight. That's all that matters. Yeah, and the only you see the thing is we don't play anybody else above us for the rest of this year. I don't think. Um, don't North think Melbourne's that. the only team that we've played above us, um, and they made mention of it um, during the the broadcast that we don't play Brisbane, Melbourne, or Adelaide this year, no. um, unless we meet them in finals. So, um, I think. We have GWS, Essendon, and then St Kilda. So we apart from Collingwood this week, which yeah. is a big game, big game, which we'll touch on shortly. But, no, um, I think the loss to Richmond didn't help um, being such a close loss and considering there's literally not much in it between fourth and where, how far down are we going? 13th. Yeah. Like you know anyone, really... anyone from 13th up can make the eight, and that's, and that's huge because I know Laura Kane's spoken about competition fairness and um, evenness, and to see that many teams from 13th up, it's like the men's season. Anyone from 15th up could have made the eight this year, and that, yeah. and it's starting, starting to see that evenness out of the competition. and. Um, we saw it with Collingwood beating Brisbane um, on the weekend, and that was a really good game to watch. And that was unbelievable. Highly, highly recommend anyone going to watch that game, as well as the Melbourne Adelaide game. That was also yes. ridiculous. And yes, an unreal display of AFLW. I, yeah, I watched the Collingwood Brisbane one on and off, like it was in the background, but I wasn't intently watching it. Whereas the Melbourne Adelaide game, I actually had to do a uni assignment on it. So I was very intently watching it. And it was um, very good. It oh, was so, so good. good. There was momentum swings, there was drama, there was it was genuinely yeah. like you couldn't script a better game. It was awesome. So go watch it if you haven't. If you want to see the best showcase of AFLW football, that game would be the one to watch because Melbourne led by 15 at quarter time and scores were level at half time and then Adelaide swing, Melbourne swing, and that last quarter could have gone either way. It was just an incredible game of football to watch and I want us to be at that level and we are going to get there. We I don't want to – someone in the comments when this goes live will have to fact check this, but I'm pretty sure I remember the commentator saying that that was Taylor Harris's first loss since 2021. Yeah, they brought it because Melbourne have, were on a, like a 15 something game winning streak or something like that. It was an unbelievable run for Melbourne and they hadn't lost a game in so long and that was their first loss in some time. And that's huge. Like for Adelaide to do that, um, I reckon that was kind of a grand final preview. That would be unreal. I mean, it if we're not there. Phenomenal. If we're not there, it, phenomenal. No, I, I, I really don't, like, there's really no point. <laughs> I don't want to be at the grand final yet. I love no, these girls. I'm very happy with what they've been doing, but we would be. It'll turn into 2018 again. I don't want that. Yeah, we don't need that. So let's just make finals, do our thing, and then we'll make the granny another year. Just like the boys. Spot on. No, but um, there's lots of ball, uh, prolific ball winners across the ground um hard not to 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 give abby uh, abby a shout out um every time i looked up yeah uh, keely shara had the ball in her hand running up and down the wing keely skepper running up and down the wing um okay. was really good to see yep mckay um mimi hill doing her thing she looked a little bit freer um on friday night i feel like she the last couple of weeks she's been a little bit labored but this week i think she really 
just opened up a little bit and it was really funny on the telecast. She was on on the um on the headset talking to Channel Seven and then Abby McKay just comes out and kicks a goal and she's like, Oh, gotta go guys, bye. Rips it off and then runs straight in onto the ground. It was the funniest thing. But no oh, very funny. So many like it was a good spread of good quality players. Um and you can't go past Bree Moody again. She's just unbelievable her setup goal of um Jess Good in that first quarter was magic like could not have scripted that forward entry any better it was fantastic like straight into the into the hole Jess pushed off her opponent bang mark goal like what that, that that's just a coach's dream I would love to see that next year with my girls just like Streaming into Ford 50, take a beautiful mark, kick a goal. Isn't that what everyone dreams of? Oh, magic. <laughs> it's like when you break it down like that, I always have this moment where someone says something like that and I'm like, wow, our game is so simple when you execute it. Isn't it? <laughs> like, like it really is a simple game. <laughs> Sometimes they make it like rocket science. And there was a couple of occasions there where we did overuse the ball we were handballing too much and we got ourselves caught. Um, again, easy fix, but we really just need to slow it down, really lower our eyes, and we've done that. We've proven that we can do that. It's just, yeah, little little things that Coach Shan, Bucky, if you're it's watching, tweak for me, please. <laughs> My services are available. I am available. I know, I know Mrs. Buck watches and I'm, I'm so shattered I didn't get to see her on, on Sunday, but I know Mrs. Buck is watching, so big shout-out to Mrs. Buck. We love you, Rach. Um, and if you ever need another coach, Shan is available. <laughs> wouldn't say no. Even just to come and watch a training session and have a chat with you, pick your brain, that would be fantastic. Hit us up. Um, but, no, Moody – and between Moody and Good, there were 17 and 16 hit-outs respectively. Just – having a look at the thing. Incredible. But flipping it over to the Bulldogs, because they're a huge story this year. They are yet to win a game, which is surprising. Um, yeah. They they're... actually remind me a lot of us last year. Yeah. That in that they have the talent mm. every week, albeit the really strong teams, but every week you give them a chance. Every week they have enough talent to beat the opposition, but they just can't put it together. No. And they're just not dominating at all. Like there's no patch of play where they have a moment of brilliance. They're just really a bit lacklustre at the moment and it reminds me a lot of us last year. And it's which a shame. is positive because it means there's a lot of upside if you get it right, but they right. should not be on zero wins. No, they shouldn't. And if you look back at like they, the losses that they have had, like last week against St. Kilda, last week against St. Kilda, it was literally the same scoreline, but we had one less point than St. Kilda did. Well, wow. that's really that's really creepy. Um, but they lost by two. No, that's not them. Um, they lost by four points to the Gold Coast Suns. They. Got smashed by Melbourne, which is no surprise. Melbourne is smashing everyone. They lost to Hawthorne by 13 points. 13 points? No, seven points. So, like, their losses haven't been huge, yeah? Like, um, Geelong and Melbourne are the two games where they got absolutely belted, but all the other games they've been in. Hmm. Which shows that they, they're not a bad team. They just can't – they're not clicking – no, and it, they got Adelaide this week in Adelaide on Friday night. Good luck, Bulldogs. Good luck, Bulldogs, indeed. But um, we, ha we have to wait until Sunday um, at 3 o'clock um, and we play Collingwood. The first time we've seen Collingwood this year, we're used to playing them round one, but... Um, we get them round seven um, at Icon Park. So um, massive. Yeah. Like, enormous game. Yeah. They've won the last four clashes against us by 15, 6, 19 and 18 points respectively. So they are currently winning the ledger. Our track record against the Pies 
not good. Not since the very, very yeah, first yeah, night recently. when we won. That was a really good Not night. when we were in finals and making records at Icon Park, but recently our track record is really bad against yeah. them. It is, and they've got some new players um, this season. And um, I truly think that they're, they've got a really well-rounded team as much as I they hate to say them. Enough. I they mean, do. We have won more games than them. Is what I was trying we to have say. won more games than them, and they have two players that will be um, unavailable due to suspension. That's One of them right. being Stacey Livingston, their yeah. full back. Um, she got suspended for one week for a, a dangerous tackle, um, which has happened quite a lot this season, uh, if I'm honest. The, um, the yeah. Collingwood Brisbane game, they were going at it, but not like. You were going to fist you guys. Yeah, like not like. I wasn't watching it like, oh, this is good. They're being aggressive. Mm. But I was like, okay, you need to calm down. Like, please, just a little bit. Because dangerous tackles are happening left, right and centre in the AFLW at the moment. And I think, you know, credit to our, our girls and our team, we haven't gone down that path. I think no. you need to be careful in that, you know, there's that rhetoric of, you know, the girls aren't as aggressive as the boys and there isn't as much fire in the games and la di da di da And to an extent that's been true. And I think this season the girls might have taken it a bit of a step too far. Like yeah. you can be aggressive without you know, putting someone else's head into the ground multiple times per game. Come watch me play. Well, not anymore, but you should have come watch me play. Well, get up your highlights, Shan. Yeah, but, look, I've got two, ga- three, two or three games recorded this year. Um, but, yeah, no, you're right. And it's it's a fine line between aggression and stupidity or yeah. brain snap. And a couple of times across the competition there have been little brain snaps where – it's two motions and they're really hot on the head at the moment, especially with all these past players, both men's and women's now coming out with the the, the brain the brain issues from too many concussions. Um, and we saw it, I've seen it in my own league where one of my teammates got heavily concussed in the first five minutes of a game um, that we actually ended up winning by forfeit. But um, it's the actually girls, been the girl didn't get really suspended, didn't get didn't get cited, didn't get a free kick, nothing. The umpire didn't pay anything. So it, it it needs to be across the board where they need to really like crack down on it. And we saw it in the men's competition this year, how much they cracked down on it. Spot on. Well, it's been a really interesting conversation actually in the last two weeks, where it's obviously disclaimer, I'm no doctor, so don't take anything I say by you know, gospel, but I was reading an article and it was a really interesting article about how we haven't got to the stage of caring about female athletes' heads as much as we have as males. The reason being is that there's not, you know, 50 female athletes coming out that retired 20 years ago saying that they have CTE and all these concussion issues because there was no AFLW players, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly, which... It was a really interesting article and it was pretty much just saying we can't wait till there is all these ex-AFLW athletes coming out right. saying that they have issues. We need to fix it now. We've obviously got the evidence from the men's that it's an issue. So we don't need women to come out and say they've got concussion problems. We need to fix it right now. And, and I think that's what... Exactly. And I think that's what they'll really crack down on. If My prediction of what will change on the off-season is the dangerous tackle and protecting the head because, yeah, we've seen way too many of them this season. Yeah. So, yeah, so Stacey Livingston, um, one week for her incident on Sophie Conway and Selena Carlson has also been dealt a one-match ban for her incident on Courtney Hodder. So, um, yeah, they've both been handed one-match bans. So um, that'll be huge for us. Because every time we play Collingwood, Stacey Livingston seems to find a way to play herself into some form. Yeah. So um, not angry about that. Just wish that she would learn to tackle better. Yeah. <laughs> Plain and simple. Absolutely. 
it'll be a really interesting game. I think we also have to be careful that I don't think Collingwood are, you know, everyone says that Collingwood are much better than us and blah, 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 and they've been more successful in the past few years. This season, we are very much on par. Oh, like, 100% we are. Very much on par. They are by no means unbeatable. My concern is that they are going to be firing after their win against Brisbane. That was a really yeah. solid win. But it could go the other way. They could be so burnt out and exhausted from such a big game that we can get a run on them early. But I think we just have to be careful that they don't carry over that energy from last week into this week and roll us. I think that's, that's the biggest fear for mine. No, I totally agree. Like Bree Davey, um, Brittany Benici, who else have we got here? Um, Sarah Rowe on the wing. Sheridan, yeah. Tani White, who's come across from um, St Kilda. Um, it's going to be a nice ruck battle between Sabrina Frederick um, and, and Bree Moody because I, I feel like Sabrina has been moved to their full-time ruck um, since um, Shani Layton retired. Um, Lauren Brazale, Ash Brazzle. Don't underestimate Ash Brazzle's speed. I watch her on a netball court. That girl is versatile. Um, yes, she is. Well, it is unbelievable. Yeah. I find Ash so intriguing. I love like, what an interesting athlete. Go win gold yeah. for the Diamonds, be one of the best netballers in the world, yeah. and then just casually go back and be an incredible AFLW player. Like, unbelievable. Tony Layton was the same. Yeah. She, she looked like a bit of a giraffe when she first started playing, but she started to really come into her own towards the end there. But... Ash Brazel's retired from international netball. Uh, I think she's retired from netball in general now. Yeah. Um, after the Collingwood Magpies um, obviously disbanded at the end of the SSN season. But watching her play football, just her just her, her sporting brain, I would just love to sit down and have a conversation with her around just sport in general because she is an incredible athlete. I, I actually it. have had – I did a leadership course and she was a guest speaker for one of them and she was – unbelievable to talk to jealous absolutely but um i know we're an aflw show but just very quickly on netball i would not be surprised if we see a lot more crossover in the coming seasons and a lot more netballers turn to aflw i don't know if anyone watching is across it but netball australia are in a little bit of diabolicals at the moment their management and everything if you want to look it up you can look it up it's way too much to get into on an aflw show but I wouldn't be surprised if there is a lot of athletes that just throw the towel in and say, no way, like this is not mm. going in a positive direction. Look what Shani did. Look what Ash did. Let's go try to put on the footy boots. So it really wouldn't shock me if we see a lot more netballers, professional netballers, um, put on the footy boots in the coming seasons. It'd be actually incredible to see. But um, I know with the introduction of the new Melbourne uh, team, the, Ma the Mavericks, it'll be interesting to see what direction a lot of these netballers take, whether they jump on board with the new um, netball team or whether they do jump across. We've seen basketballers. I mean, Bree Davey was um, the Australian women's soccer keeper. Oh, sorry, goalkeeper. can't even speak. Um, she was, yeah, she was a, a goalkeeper for, for the Australian women's soccer team and she cross-coded. Like there's so many, like we've got our Irish girls that have come across that have played Gaelic that are cross-coded. There's lots of cross-coded players across the AFLW. Um, and as much as I love seeing that, I do want to make sure that they do not forget the grassroots girls that are coming through our programs at the moment as well. So it's a fine line between whether we, we, we go for the elite athlete that's already made, that's come from another sport and have to teach them the game, as opposed to a girl that's played football since she was five coming through and she's 18 and she's ready to go. So I got think that's the that. better route nowadays. I think you have to go for the athlete that's been trained in the sport for so long because that's the only way we're going to grow our sport. We can't keep keep. Yeah, don't get me wrong, we bring in Irish men to the men's programs mm -hmm. all the time. So there is room for one or two, but we can't keep having to teach the game. We've got to be moving forward with girls that have grown up with it, I think. I agree. 100%. Swinging that back. Weird, that was a very weird digression that we just went on, but it was great. Hey, it's fine by me. <laughs> but no, because we were, we were kind of we were talking about Collingwood still, so it kind, yeah. of, kind of fits in. But going back to the game, um, 
Are you going on Sunday? I sure am. I think there's a few of us going with bells and whistles. I know Brando and Ari are going. Beautiful. Um, uh, Shez, I'm just naming friends that you've got no idea who they are. Shez is a Collingwood supporter, but she's a good Collingwood supporter. She okay. supported the baggers when she came to the footy with me during the year. So she'll be okay. going. There's a few. I think maybe JT might go, who was a friend of the besties, if anyone watches the besties. So there's quite a few of us going, I think, big group of us. And then I know you'll be there. Will you be there? It's my wedding anniversary, so I'm not oh, sure yet. I'll, I'll, I'll have the crew to make up for Shan's loudness. <laughs> no, well, yeah, so we're, we're spending the night away on Saturday night. But um, Sunday is our seven-year wedding anniversary, so we'll most likely um, – I might try and get there. I might um, – Bring Ava, but um, we'll see. I'm a maybe at this point, but um, yeah, wedding anniversary before football, unfortunately. <laughs> but no, Absolutely. I will be watching intently wherever I am, whether I'm at Icon Park or whether I have it on my phone, um, because um, it's going to be absolutely huge. So any bagger across Melbourne get to Icon Park. We we do not, and I repeat, do not want to have more Collingwood supporters at Icon Park. If there is one game. We had more Sydney the other week. Yeah, I do not want to see that. Carlton Collingwood, Icon Park. Let's get there. Let's cheer loud because let's let's be honest, we have to beat them. <laughs> one more win, I reckon, will secure us a final spot. And we do not want them playing final. So let's get there. Let's beat them. And the rest is history. I don't think anything else needs to be said. That was great. No, but my prediction is we'll win by 15 points. What about you? Uh, a goal. Oh, why would you do yeah, that? I, to me? I think it's going to be a close one. I don't think Carl Collingwood's ever a blowout when we win. So I think it's going to be no. Carl Collingwood. Uh, yeah. Carl Collingwood. I think it's going to be a close one. Carl Collingwood, close one. Heard it yeah. here first. I reckon we're not going to quite get our eight individual goal kickers. I'll, I'll settle for five. Yeah, I'll go five. Nice. Beautiful. But in case anyone forgot, eight individual goal kickers. Um, before we go, I actually forgot to do our three, two, one from um the oh, weekend. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Who was your three, two, one? Uh three Shara, two Hill, one good. Mine was. Good's been good. No, mine was uh, three Shara, two McKay, one Hill. So very similar but very different at the same time. Um, Shara, definitely best on ground for mine. So um, let's hope she can carry that form into this week because I, I reckon she might end up lining up on on a, on a Sarah row, which will be a, a nice nice one. And, and let's hope Kez is, is right to go for this week. Yeah. No I other injuries out of the game, I don't think. I know Moa had a little bit of a knee niggle and Abby had a bit of an ankle niggle. Um, haven't had an injury report come out, so fingers crossed they're both ready and raring to go for Sunday. Fingers crossed. Let's go beat those pies. Couldn't have said it better myself. What a great way to end the show. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Kira, for joining me this morning. Um, the show will go live tonight. Um don't know why I'm saying that now. You'll all see it anyway when it comes up at 7 o'clock. But, no, thank you so much for those that are going to watch this a bit later on tonight. Please do leave your comments still. We do read them. Um, we do appreciate everyone's support. Um, but thank you so much, Kira. Go and enjoy the rest of your day, um, and I'll chat to you, I'm pretty sure. So up the baggers. Go baggers. <laughs>